why would I use the water? Why would you continue to use it? Why don't you just get bottled water? And they showered in it as well. Could never be me. Could never be me. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to The Shannon Show. Hello if you're new. So today's video is going to be a review of The Vanishing at Cecil Hotel. I hope everybody is doing as well as can be and I really do hope everybody is being as proactive as possible in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. And if you're still on the lookout for some resources, I've linked some in the description. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts on my commentary. I'm always up for a chat, I'm always up for debate. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a dislike, no hard feelings. And if you really, really like this video, consider subscribing and helping your girl out. So, is the Cecil Hotel documentary worth the bit? If you're binging it as background noise, perfect. But if you're actively watching it, I'm not sure if you're going to enjoy the binge. I think for me, the documentary was better off as background noise, and I'll tell you why. Obviously, the Cecil Hotel historically is known as a shady hotel. Notorious criminals are known to have stayed there. Notorious crimes are known to have happened there. And obviously, the main subject of the documentary, Alyssa Lamb, was staying there, and that's where she disappeared and was eventually found dead. And this four part documentary serves as an investigation to that. So one of the main things I didn't like about this documentary is the structure of it um, and the storytelling. For me, the storytelling wasn't really engaging. It felt more like a lecture than a compelling, dramatic structure that drew you in and kept you engaged. A lot of the time I found myself drifting to my phone and distracted a lot. That's why I feel like is perfect for background noise often times they'd make a point or they'd say a clue you get the point instantly but then they'd ramble on about it for like a full five minutes but you've already got the point and what they're rambling on about isn't really that interesting anyway because you've already got the key source of information um so i feel like there was a lot of that going on in this documentary where it kind of just felt like well, I kind of literally said in my head, okay, I get the point, can we move on to the next point now? For me, it felt like it dragged on a lot. And I think a lot of it was stuffed with, frankly, what I believe is irrelevant stuff. Like we went into a large section of the history of the hotel, which I feel like literally could have been done in a fairly short section. There was bits about um, the area of the hotel, which I just kind of felt like was irrelevant. At one point, it even felt like it was a hotel review. We have commentary on homelessness. We have commentary on poverty, we, which quite frankly had nothing to do with the investigation. So there was a lot of times I was sitting there and I was kind of thinking, why are we talking about this? Can we get back to the investigation? There was another kind of, um, section about mental health which was i feel like kind of relevant to the investigation but again i feel like they kind of went on a tangent that was separate to the investigation and i feel like that affected the quality of the documentary overall the focus of the documentary kind of felt a bit jumbled because there wasn't a clear aim for me is this an investigation about Alyssa or is this an investigation about the Cecil Hotel? Is this an investigation about downtown LA? Um, I felt like that was really jumbled up and I feel like if they had just focused purely on the investigation this would have been a better documentary and a more compelling and engaging documentary. Um, but in terms of when they did focus on um, the main investigation Alyssa's disappearance and death, um, when they did focus on her I feel like Again, it could have been done a bit better in my opinion because because of the way that it dragged out, it just felt, sometimes you'd remember, oh yeah, this is a documentary about her. That's how much filler, unnecessary filler was in here. I feel like when, you know, some of the evidence started to come through, I started to get less and less interested. And I think maybe it's because the, 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 <laughs> The cynical piece in my mind was expecting it to be some gruesome reveal. and something a bit more gruesome than what we get. I kind of lost my investment in the investigation and because it just wasn't made very dramatic. It wasn't like a big reveal. It was all very anticlimactic. So I definitely feel like they could have built up, you know, the evidence that they had and the evidence that was revealed. Um, in a way that was a lot more compelling, engaging and dramatic in my opinion. 
and it would have been nice to you know try and source out people who knew her you know at least one person maybe not her family if because obviously the family probably didn't want to be a part of it but you know maybe you know <clears throat> someone from her neighborhood you know someone that she um went to school with somebody because it just didn't really feel like it was her investigation like especially with her investigation like we're hearing people who literally don't know her didn't know her alive talking about her as if like she's her friend like the stand people who stand her after she died it just felt very strange that they were the representative of the people who who loved and cared for her um so i feel like obviously if you can't get anyone you can't get anyone but i feel like they could have at least got somebody who at least you know knew her in real life saw her in real life who could have spoken to um her character like we didn't even get the bookstore lady i don't know where they were the mentions of her family just kind of felt so detached it was like well her family said this and her sister said this it just didn't feel very personal and then you know some of you know the post investigation stuff as well it kind of just felt very rushed in um it just kind of felt like oh yeah we're just gonna put put that in at the end for us to finish one thing that i think was very interesting about this documentary which i kind of feel like was another thing i'm not really sure about with this documentary is obviously it has um interviews in it which kind of serves also as the narration as well um but some of the people that they picked i felt like was a bit questionable because they literally had um youtubers and it was quite literally a youtuber who was following the case as it was happening and trying to figure out what happened and that was the basis of them being picked as the interview and you know obviously with these crime documentaries there's always like discourse online um but i felt like it's quite strange that they had an actual like youtuber like an actual crime channel youtuber as an interviewee i feel like is this like the digital age now where like YouTube conspiracy theorists are like sources for documentaries now? I'm not really sure how I feel about it and I'm not sure if they really added much value to the documentary. I feel like maybe if there was kind of like snippets here and there with the whole kind of the YouTube conspiracy theories coming together here and there, fine. But I think they dedicated too much of the narrative to these YouTuber conspiracy theories because it kind of started to feel like a reddit page or a forum it didn't really feel like a documentary anymore in addition to the youtubers they also had one of her stands as an interviewee as well and when i say stan i mean like someone who found out about her disappearance and started to stan her basically and they were an interviewee and he was just basically saying how you know they he looked her up read her um tumblr and just started to grow a connection and that was literally what he was there to say on a documentary and i was just kind of like this is weird and why is he a source in this documentary i didn't feel like all of the sources needed to be there obviously we had the police officers and the forensic experts but then the you know this youtuber okay maybe that can work but this literally this random stan that's a bit weird I'm sorry, that, the sound was a bit weird. I'm not sure if that stand needed to be there. So even though I feel like the structure needed some work, it did bring about some interesting points. So like I was saying, the stand, it did bring up stand culture, as in stand culture, as in people who stand victims of crime and try and solve crimes on themselves and become conspiracy theorists and how toxic that community can come and how that has consequences for people especially when it concerns misinformation and how misinformation has the potential to cause a lot of harm which happens a lot with you know any type of conspiracy theory i mean there's one thing peddling out of theory but then passing it off as the truth i think even away from conspiracy theories just people wanting to make a story they don't like what they hear so they have to make a story and run with it so i feel like that aspect of the conversation in the documentary was interesting but i feel like they dwelled on that a bit too much i feel like it should have just been a throw-in um to the investigation rather than it just being a whole segment my final points in terms of the documentary there is this one character there called amy who was um a general manager i think 
of the Cecile Hotel for 10 years. Um, and she was there throughout all of this dodgy business that was going on in the hotel. And I fully believe if she's there for 10 years and the things that she said that she saw at the hotel within her 10 years and she stayed there for a full 10 years, I definitely think that she was getting some money under the table um, and she knew what was going on in these hotels because she she didn't even look surprised when she was saying all of these crazy things going on in the hotel. So I definitely think that she knew that there was dodgy stuff going on in the hotel and she was taking a little cut, in my opinion. I'd be interested to hear from the people who watched it. I feel like that Amy manager is dodgy. And another thing is I definitely would not have used the water at the Cecil Hotel if that's the colour that it was and I thought it tasted weird why would I use the water why would you continue to use it why don't you just get bottled water and they showered in it as well could never be me could never be me <laughs> and of course um the final thing I feel like the documentary kind of took one side and drummed this is what happened and this is the truth in regards to whether I think Foul play was um, a factor in Alyssa's unfortunate death. If I'm to take all the evidence presented in the documentary, I don't think, I personally don't think that it was foul play. But I'd be interested to hear from you guys on whether you feel like it's just too suspicious, the circumstances of her death, or whether you just, or whether you um, agree that it's there was no foul play but that's pretty much my thoughts on the documentary i feel like it's great for background noise but i think as a you know focused and gay fully engaged viewer i do think some people will find that it drags a lot some people might even find it boring i think there's definitely highlights in each episode but for me i feel like this is just perfect for background noise and i feel like if they edited out a lot of the filler it would have been a way better documentary in my opinion yeah if you haven't watched it yet do let me know if this is a documentary that you're thinking about checking out and if you have watched it do let me know what your thoughts were on it as always let me know what you thought of my commentary you might as well subscribe and if you have don't forget to put my notification bell on so you know my next video is dropping i also did a reaction to the first documentary episode if you want to check that out um and i'm also trying to get to two point 8k subscribers i'm almost there so i'd appreciate if you help me reach my short-term goal and thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far until next time guys bye <laughs>